Let's now apply this result to a problem where we're trying to determine the work done by the, an expansion of an adiabatic process. And so here in this process we have 0.85 moles of a monatomic ideal gas. It's initially at a pressure of 15 atmospheres and 300 Kelvin. And so it's now allowed to expand until the final pressure is one atmosphere. And so what we're trying to find is the work done knowing that this is done adiabatically and reversibly. And so if we're going to find the work done, we know that the work is equal to the change in internal energy, which is just going to be equal to the integral of the initial temperature to the final temperature of the number of moles times the molar heat capacity at constant volume times dt. And so we can start to fill in values here. We know that this initial temperature is 300 Kelvin. We know that the number of moles here is 0.85. We know that this heat capacity here, well, that's equal to 3 over 2R. And how I know that is that for a monatomic gas, we know that the internal energy U is equal to 3 halves R times T. And if we take the derivative of this guy with respect to T, for temperature I should write, we'll take the partial, and we hold that at constant volume, then that's what's going to give us this 3 halves R. So the only thing that we don't have in this whole expression is what is the final temperature? And from there, once we know that, then we can actually just evaluate this integral and we can determine our work. So that's where we're going to start, is we're going to start looking for what is this final temperature. So then to find the final temperature, what we need to do is define the state variables at the final state. And we're going to use the initial state variables to do that. So the first thing we need to do is to find out what the initial volume is, because we know the initial pressure and we know the initial temperature. And so what we'll do is we'll find what VI is. And then from this, we can just use the ideal gas law, because within a state, we can use the ideal gas law and ideal gases to find values. And so in this case, once I write down my ideal gas law, I can solve for VI, and I can substitute in for all the values, 0 0.850 times 0 0.08206. And I'm using this um, version of the gas constant because I'm going to write down my, at, or my pressure in atmospheres. So I'm going to write my 15 on the bottom. And then I'm going to multiply all this by 300, which is the temperature. And what this gives me is an initial volume of 1.40 liters. Using this, then I can find the final volume. I'm going to use the expression that we just calculated in the previously, just a second ago. PI times VI raised to the power of gamma is equal to PF times VF raised to the power of gamma. Well, in this case, we know that gamma is just going to be equal to the ratio of the molar heat capacity at constant pressure divided by the molar heat capacity at constant volume. We know the molar heat capacity at constant volume, and we just said that that was 3 halves R. We know that the molar heat capacity at constant pressure is just that number plus 1, so that gives me 5 halves R. So that gives me a gamma that's going to be equal to 5 over 3, because I can cancel out my r's and I can cancel out my halves. And so in this case, then I can just plug in the numbers that I've just calculated that are given to me in the prompt. So that means my initial pressure, I can do this in atmospheres. So my initial pressure is 15. My initial volume, I just calculated 1.4 raised to the power of 5 thirds. My final pressure is 1. And then I've just got my final volume raised to the power of 5 thirds. And so if I calculate this thing on the left hand side, what I get is 26.3. And then what I do is I take it to the square root of the power of 5 thirds. And then that's what gives me my VF. So what that gives me is a final volume of 7.1 liters. Finally, since I know now the final volume, I know the final pressure, I can find out what the final temperature is. And from that, I'm just going to use the ideal gas law. P final, V final is equal to NR T final. What I'm going to get is T final is equal to P final V final divided by N times R, which is just going to be 1 times 7.1. 
all divided by 0 0.85 times the ideal gas constant. Again, I'm going to use the one that's written in atmospheres, 0 0.08206. What that gives me as a final temperature is 102 Kelvin. And the one thing I just want to just point out real quickly here is that we just did an adiabatic expansion, um, a reversible expansion, and what that happened is that our initial temperature started at 300 Kelvin, and that this expansion dramatically lowered the temperature to 102 Kelvin. And typically adiabatic expansions lower the temperature of the gas itself, and that's something that's common with these problems. But now we can finally get back to our original problem. Because again, what we were trying to find was the work of the system. We can now substitute in the bounds of this integration. Since I know my initial temperature is 300, my final temperature is 102, and then I'm just going to plug in my values. 0 0.85, the heat capacity at constant volume, 3 over 2R, and then I'm going to be integrating this over dt. Well, in this case, I still have 0 0.85. I'm going to have 3 over 2 times 8.3145. And then this is just going to be T evaluated between 102 and 300. And here I'm using the gas constant 8.3145 because this is the one that's written in liters times um, kilopascals, which then in the end gives me joules, which is what my value of work is going to be in. From here, though, I can multiply all the numbers that I have up front, and I get 10.6, and that's equal to 102 minus 300, because that's what I get when I evaluate my variable t with respect to the 102 and the 300, so that's just applying my fundamental theorem of calculus. Finally, what I'm going to be left with as an energy is negative 2099, 2099 joules.